Hello everyone, San Monani, and welcome to the ninth European Film Festival 2022 in South Africa. Um, today I have the great honor of having a Q&A session with Laura Samani uh, for the film Small Body or Piccolo Corpo. And we are very happy to be here with us. I'm especially very happy. A lot of the film resonates with me. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Kwezi. Thank you so much. I think I'd like to first start with something that jumped out to me the most uh, in the film. It's set in Italy in 1901, I believe. Yeah. And the feeling of it as a daughter of a, of a storyteller and someone who's grown up around story a lot, um, and especially in our especially South African, but I believe African culture and generally story and folk tale is a very big element of how we archive history and how we keep safe culture and language and song. And so the film for me felt like sitting through a storyteller narrating a story, um, especially because uh, I know in other cultures, it's very jarring <laughs> to hear that our, our stories are not like fairy tales where it's like very clear evil, very clear good, and good wins the day and happy ending and yay. But the idea of you're, you're being shown how things can go if things go wrong, if all the things go wrong, this is what can happen. These are the choices that can be made and how can you use that in your life? So there's, a, there's an idea of, yes, we hope for the miracle. Yes, we reach for it. Um, what happens if the miracle doesn't happen? What happens if it does? And there's a very real and raw part to the way we tell story um, in, in Africa. And I'm curious to know if, if, if you, by any chance, grew up around story, if it's a thing in, in Italy, and how, how has um, that been? How have those choices to, to tell the story in such a way been for you? Wow. Well, um... It has been a very long journey because uh, in a way, when I say we, I'm talking about, uh, well, myself and Elisa Dondi and Marco Borromei, who are the co-writers. And uh, we try to dig into the Western way of storytelling and to get rid of all the um, like comfort zone attitude of storytelling in a way. Because what happened is that uh, of course, I don't want to blame it, but uh, in a way, Disney ruined everything. So <laughs> they, they took the most important, like the roots of our, um, yeah, of our stories uh, and mm. they made it nicer and they made it comfortable. And yeah. uh, we lost something that is very vital, which is fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, if we go back to the Green Brothers stories, uh, which are the, like, the, mm, really the roots of the, at least the Northern Europe storytelling. Mm. I'm more Mediterranean than Northern, but still, mm. this is something that is like strongly entangled in me. Mm. Um, like the, um, what's her name? The Little Mermaid uh, didn't end up that way, you know? Yeah. It, it yeah. wasn't nice at all. It was like, uh, like bloody, I would say, the way it mm -hmm. ended. And what happened is that I, um, I randomly, walked into this script, which was um, an essay, I think, talking about uh, the importance of getting lost in the woods when you're a kid. Mm. So talking about the fact, uh, like metaphorically speaking, of course, uh, talking about the fact that um, if you are a kid uh, and your parents tell you stories that are a bit scary, and my parents kind of did it, I think, um, you're gonna experience uh, fear and anger and uh, loneliness uh, and uh, everything that is dark, but you know that you're safe in your bed. You know that you're mm -hmm. under your blanket and you know that uh, you're there with your parents basically, mm -hmm. but it's like your neurons are reacting, uh, mirroring mm -hmm. those feelings. So it's like you're training yourself for real life in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we really wanted, after I read this essay, I really wanted to, to go down, down this flow in a way. So to, to do something similar telling this story. 
Mm. And, uh, so I really want you to feel fear. I really want you to feel loneliness, uh, knowing that I'm not experiencing directly it because it's storytelling and this is uh, mm. the, um, the strongest aspect, uh, I think, mm. working with these tools. No, I don't know if I answered your question. But Definitely. Is, yeah. No, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy that so much because that's that's a lot of how we create art and theater is through the, the this perspective. Um, and film as well now um, that we're more into film uh, this this perspective of story where we come from so it's it's beautiful to see um, another thing that that stands out for me is also the use of song um, in place of like a musical score again resonates in African culture completely um, of of using song as a way of breathing when there are no words left and you, you find a way to, to breathe in, by singing or um, to welcome someone back from a long trip or to send them off or to take them through a new stage of life. Like the first scene, right, is, is, is welcoming a new spirit, is also uh, transitioning a woman into the next phase of, of her womanhood um, or one of the phases of her womanhood rather. And, and also in story, moving from one world to another uh, uh, within in the story it becomes like the carrying force and and that's kind of what song did for me in the film as well it was that intentional did it happen organically how how was song um, um, at the beginning I, I didn't want any music at the beginning but this yeah. and now it's almost a musical I would say but uh, <laughs> uh, but this is because when I start working on something uh, I'm usually very dogmatic. So I start like, this is gonna be the rule. And then of course, luckily for everybody, <laughs> for me, um, I soften because I, I meet people and I start talking with other brains. And uh, so things get more organic, luckily. And what happened is that um, I met, uh, everything is about meetings, I think, uh, mm -hmm. in life and also in uh, the artistic process. So I met this woman who is, um, she's a teacher. She teaches in a kindergarten, so she's not a musician, she's not a singer, but she's really passionate about folk music in my region. And notice that my region is very small and it's Northeast Italy, so it's not like, uh, Roma, pizza, mandolino, it's like we're almost Slovenian, we're almost Austrian, so it's like really a small region that has a lot of influences from foreign countries, different languages, different traditions, and this is an enrichment also in music. Mm. So she's really an expertise in it, and she started telling me, so we were having nice time together talking drinking coffee, you know? And she said, uh, but you know that we used, but it's like this in every part of the world, I would say, that music was vital to, I think you mentioned it at the beginning of the conversation, to pass on the knowledge of the mm. community, so to preserve it, and also to um, have a rhythm while working. It yeah. was important, uh, like for the fishermen, for example, it was really important or to peel the corn, just to give you a few examples. And so she started, we were in a bar and she started singing and I was like, okay, don't do that. <laughs> like, uh, I was not used to this kind of approach, you know? Usually we're like sitting, looking and listening mm -hmm. at someone that is on the stage. We don't start mm -hmm. singing down the road. And she was doing that so in like a natural way and with a normal voice, I would say, not mm -hmm. with a nice way of singing. Mm -hmm. And this was very powerful because she explained me that this is what happened at the time. You would start singing like this and people would start following you singing. And this mm. is something that we totally lost and I wanted it back. Mm. So I asked her, please help me. And we have to teach these songs to the people. Mm. So it's like we embodied again the, the attitude of the time. Yeah. Oh. yeah. This is how That's it is. Lovely. It makes it makes me laugh when you say that she started singing in a bar and you were shocked because yeah. my mother is that person. She she just starts singing at any occasion and people just join and that's what we do. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. I love that so much. Um, the use of language 
And I think there's two parts to this for me because both in the silence and the absence of language, because it's quite a quiet film and a slow film. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things that are not said as as in life, because we humans don't know how to deal with loss. We don't know where people go and we don't don't understand. Like we find solutions, we find answers in, in different ways, depending on what you believe in. But it's it's a lot. <laughs> and so again in this film, I felt that heavily the idea of we don't have the answers for you. So we'll say the bare minimum and then what we rather than say I don't know, we choose to go, this is what I know, and it's the gospel truth, and that's that. Um, your child has been buried move on Um, (laughs) child is in limbo move on you'll have more children it'll be fine keep going and this woman has to just keep it moving somehow and not deal with what has happened Um, although she chooses to which is the journey that we go on but also the actual language which is dialect um, that was formerly banned I believe and 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 the idea of the moments that break out of the silence uh, in a language that was formerly silenced for me is quite powerful um, because certain things can't be said in for us in English because that's our universal language that we communicate in but I speak Zulu and Swazi and other and I can't say certain idioms and certain things I can't translate them into English yeah. and I know that that's the same in other countries and and, and in this way and so that these choices of, of the silence against unsilencing this language is is fascinating. Um, if you have anything to say to that. No, of course. And uh, I totally follow what you were saying because uh, I think that um, when there are like um, foreign cultures that are and languages and uh, people that are in a way suffocating uh, another one, which is... Uh, different of course uh, um, not nice things happen you know so uh, in totally different ways but this is something that happened in my region as well because as I was mentioning before we we are a region that is on the border with different cultures and uh, that had many different um, uh, I don't know the name in English Domini I would say it in Italian Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that no meaning Mm -hmm. uh so my city used to be part of the austrian hungarian empire so we had like german influences what happened is that uh, um after the unification of the country so when italy joined uh, when uh, friuli venezia giulia joined italy of course the language was a tool so deciding that italian was the language of the country was a tool to unify also politically speaking uh, the territory but um, what, like the worst thing that happened was during fascism, because uh, as you said, uh, the dialects were banned and especially the ones that had Slavic influences. And this created uh, um, a deep gap and also a scar in different, in several generations and in my family as well, because uh, we lost Slovenian for example. Mm. At a certain point, uh, someone decided, uh, okay, I'm going to surrender, and we lost Slovenian in my family. So now uh, me and my mother, we're trying to, you know, reconcile with this, and uh, we're studying it, uh, which is, Mm. it's Mm. it's nonsense on one sense, uh, because it's like studying something that is entangled in you, and like the sounds are, they belong to me, but I Mm. I cannot speak back, you know. So, and it takes generation to reconcile with this kind of thing and to gain it back in a way. So everything that I'm talking about uh, deals with the fact that uh, um, I decided to go political in the film because of mm-hmm. course you can shoot a film that it's a period drama because at the time where the film is set, uh, nobody would speak Italian, they would speak dialect. Yes. But there are several uh, flows of philology Mm. So nobody understands them, neither in Italy, because the dialect is so specific. But there mm. are like philological flows, uh, because to give you an example, on the island, uh, they're supposed to speak all the same dialect. Because it's mm. a small island, you know, so mm-hmm. they're supposed to speak the same language. They don't, because mm. I decided to cast people from different places 
all in the region, but from different yes. places, so with different dialects. And after rehearsing, you know, trying to find a common way, I was like, oh, I'm doing the same, you know, I'm being fascist. I don't want them to, um, mm. to come uh, back, to come down to uh, an agreement in language. Mm. I want them to express themselves in the idiom they think, in the idiom they dream with. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I'm, I'm like, okay, I don't care if it's not the same. I want them to, like, mm -hmm. these people, this person, they're, they're here, they're alive. I want them to express in their own language. And uh, I think that every time we can do something that is not fascist, uh, is something nice to do, especially today, which is a very sad day because, um, yeah, uh, we had the election yesterday and the right mm. wing uh, is mm -hmm. very strong back again this morning. Yeah. So yeah. The world is at a huge turning point in every yeah. every part yeah. of the world. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is a lovely conversation. <laughs> um, the last question I have to choose now. Um, okay, the characters, I think coming to the characters. Um, the choice to have the characters as they are. So with, with Agatha, both very wide-eyed um, and there, there's a theme for the festival at the moment, innocence and beyond. And so there's this element of, of, of innocence. Obviously she's very young and, 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 and this idea of going, yes, I'm gonna go against religion. I'm, technically I'm gonna go against God in a way and I'm going to go embark on this journey because this this is this is what needs to happen and I don't know the dangers but let's go and there's also this idea of the beyond the shedding of skin yeah. because she is she's she's acting not from a place of curiosity she's acting from a place of desperation and and depth and 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 she's got a lot of dignity and strength to her despite all of the fear and 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 um that that element as well as um Linsha or, or Lynx who is very has this mysterious thing we're not quite sure what's going on and then there's this non-binary element that is very curious because often I think we think these na her names yes but these experiences are modern and new and and and, and really they probably existed from the beginning of time because humans are humans and humans will will deal um with how they are the way they will and and um and curious enough to go on a journey with someone she does, he they don't know um and, and 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 embark on it as if it's their own journey um so these these uh ideas of how the the characters develop into who they are and i'm sure there's more that you can say i i believe that they developed over time yeah. um, and 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 if you can tell us a bit more about that process I, I really love your analysis by the way and uh, something that I have to share to start with and to share with you it's that um, I learned in the like last year to use the way of saying they and them about yeah. links because we don't have it in Italy yet mm. it's mm, we don't. Yeah. It's, it's arriving, but uh, like it's coming, but we're finding different solutions now to express this thing. And uh, mm. um, and I always I, I used to refer to links as a he, him. Yes. Uh, but it, it totally makes sense that it's a them because yeah. uh, I'm going to start with Lynch then because yes, uh, go for it. at the very beginning of the story, there was no Lynch. So Agatha mm. was traveling alone and it was pretty boring, to be honest with you. So the reason why we decided to create another character was because it was it was more interesting, I would say. So it was functional to have a body movie instead of a lonely journey. Mm. And uh, and at the beginning, Lynch was a she, mm. like a declared she with a different name, but we were struggling a bit because um, um, we start uh, we start from a perspective of like archetypes, you know. So mm -hmm. we were like working with Agatha as a feminine archetype, the mother, so mm -hmm. someone that would uh, offer herself in order to do the right thing for the one she loves. So even the sacrifice. And so on the other hand, we wanted to build to create a 
a masculine archetype. And so we decided, okay, we should shift this character to something else. And we got mesmerized by the, the warrior figure, the mm -hmm. warrior archetype, mm -hmm. which in Disney film would be Mulan, to give right. an example, which is a good reference, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and so we progressively started to shift Lynche to another place in a way. And it ended up like this. So she is a she, biologically speaking, but she's disguised mm. as a he, and they chose an animal name. And mm. in Italia, so there are three, there are not even two, there are three. Mm. And uh, the amazing thing is that, uh, and this was not intentional, but we understood it later on, is that uh, in Italian, the animals are gendered. We don't mm. have, we have il, lo, la. Mm. And uh, lince is feminine, even when you're talking about the male links. Oh, wow. mm. So it was like, wow, this is perfect. Mm. While talking about, so lince had like very, a very uh, many, many layers through the year. Mm. And I think that the last one, so the, the fluidity basically came with the fact that uh, we started writing uh, during 2017. So me too, mm -hmm. Martin, and uh, we're, we're political animals, but we were not sitting around the table saying, okay, now we're gonna build a character that speaks to the people regarding these topics. Uh, it was uh, unconscious. And this is the most um, cool thing I would say, because it was spontaneous, you know? Yeah. And I think it's a character that really speaks to the contemporary times uh, without wanting to do it because we didn't start with that intention. It was natural. Yes. While on the other hand, Agatha, um, Agatha I think is a more like a mythic character. So mm. she, she doesn't really belong to the present time. She, she is like, in a way she's frozen in a moment Mm. Um, metaphorically and not because uh, she cannot move on she she doesn't learn to let things go and this is usually the arch that characters have so they yes. learn something she doesn't really learn something but I really look up to her for it because she she sticks to what she thinks it's right to do mm -hmm. and um, and like the saints in a way she gets um, she she stays in a in a way in a status forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for this conversation yeah. and for engaging so openly with me and and for creating the work to to the cast, the crew, everyone. Thank you so much for no, giving so much of yourselves. Thank, thank you. you because uh, really I enjoyed so much talking with you about, about yeah. these topics. Uh, no, really, yeah. really, it was a long I'm time so since glad. I haven't had a conversation like this. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to meet you. And thank you to everyone watching as well. I hope you enjoy the film if you haven't seen it yet. I hope you go watch it again if you have. And uh, there are 16 films in the film festival. So please go watch the other 15 as well and enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you so much for joining us.